R8 has been at the dealership for about a week and it's finally done. It's time to pick it up, but first, food. All the cool YouTubers blog about their food, right? And I got a cold start this thing, so I'm gonna keep the garage door closed. Just kidding, this thing's silent. So I had to give it a little rev while I was sitting under the service bay awning. Don't hate, it's practically a tunnel and you know what we gotta do when we're in a tunnel. So what I took it in for, if you didn't already see in my last vlog video, was low coolant warning light. It was intermittent and often went away after the engine warmed up, so I didn't think much of it. Finally took it in because I got tired of hearing the stupid beep every time I started the car and the warning message. So uh, took it in and they said it was the left radiator leaking. They said if a rock had hit it or something that it wouldn't be covered by warranty and it would cost me $1,800 out of pocket. Yeah, that would suck. Luckily it was a warranty fix. This will be the first time in a while that I can start my car with absolutely zero warning beeps and lights, so that's awesome. Feels good to have it back in the garage. I parked it over here because I've been working on the 2 Series with the lift. And a uh, funny thing, I noticed that the 3 Series looks like a beached whale when the R8's parked next to it. R8 isn't exactly a small car, but when you put a regular car next to it, you really realize how low supercars are. The 3 Series almost looks like an SUV in this shot. Slight change of topic and speed, but I recently saw a video promoting head and neck safety. Maybe it wasn't just a video about that, but uh, it was someone on Facebook, a fellow car guy that posted this. It was a video clip that made me realize that since I track a lot, I should probably invest in a Hans device. Watch the driver's head compared to the passenger's. The passenger had a Hans device, but the driver didn't. Yep, they weren't even going that fast. That type of injury often results in spinal damage that more than often results in death. The only Hans device on the market that I could find that works with a regular three-point seatbelt is the Simpson Hybrid S. It's carbon fiber, very sexy, and you never know, might save my life someday. My Sparco carbon fiber helmet luckily already has Hans attachment points on the back of the helmet, so I'm good to go. Safety first. Can't drive cool cars if you're dead. I have a track day coming up at Circuit of the Americas soon, so since I've never driven on that track, it was extra motivation to pick up some Hans protection. So my wife got me these for my birthday. One's an Audi banner and the other one is a BMW M logo banner. I'm pretty hard to shop for since I usually buy what I want, so she did pretty awesome and I'm excited to get these up in the garage. Where to mount them is the question. I want to get some cabinets for the garage soon, so I feel like I should wait until I get those up before I decide where they go. Speaking of cabinets, I was at Ikea with the wife last weekend buying a desk and I got this crazy idea. Their uh, basic kitchen cabinets are dirt cheap, and I thought it might be best to use those for the garage. The tiny sheet metal Husky cabinets at Home Depot are like $180 each for the decent ones. So to buy a whole row of those to go above my workbench would cost me over a grand. I don't need that much storage, but the main reason I would get them is so I can put lights under them to light up the work surface because despite the fact that my garage is really well lit, um, the work surface just isn't that bright since it's against the wall. Plus, the lighting casts a shadow on whatever you're working on on the workbench because you you know, when you're sitting at the bench, you're sitting between whatever you want to light up and where your lights are behind you on the ceiling, so. For the kind of money I'd spend on buying like a whole row of Husky cabinets, I could just get a whole like, custom Ikea cabinet set. The only downside I originally could think of was just strength, but kitchen cabinets usually hold, you know, stacks of really heavy plates and glasses, so I don't really think it'd be much worse than a garage. Anyway, I'm really curious what everyone thinks about this somewhat crazy idea. Am I crazy? And while we're still on the subject of garage projects, I have a few others coming up. I never did flooring. I built this house two years ago, and I was kind of sad and upset with myself that I didn't get epoxy done before I moved all my crap into the garage. But the more I use my garage, the more I realized that I'd probably ruin the flooring if I did epoxy pretty quickly from scratches, scuffs, and even stains. I still have stains, like these brown stains from using PB Buster, and then it mixes with the rust, and then it drips down onto the floor, and then I forget to clean it up, and I don't know. Epoxy just might not be for me. What I did think about doing, though, is getting some of those tiles that you can snap together that you see at those auto shows. 
like Swiss Tracks, I think is one of the brands, but we'll see. Also need to finish my garage air system. I kind of got it slightly started, but never finished. And I'll make a video about that really soon. Since I paid the builder of the house to paint my garage, since it costs virtually nothing, uh, I wanted to buy some charcoal colored paint and paint the rest of the bare wood, like around the garage doors. Just looks weird to have these nice painted walls in the garage and then you still have unpainted wood around the garage doors, but that should be a really cheap and easy project. I just need warm weather weekends so I can paint and then have the paint dry quickly. Well, I think I covered everything I wanted to share, so have a good one. See ya.